Genesis 43 to 45. Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass, when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought out of Egypt, that their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little more food. Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brothers with us, we will go down to buy you food. But if you do not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with us. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly, telling me, that man, that you had another brother? But they said, The man questioned us so closely about ourselves and our relatives, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? We just answered his questions. Is there any way we could know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and we will get up and go, so that we may live and not die, both we and you, and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. For my hand, from my hand will you require him. If you do not bring him if you do not bring him to you and set him before you, then you will let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not delayed, surely we would have returned a second time by now. Their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then, then do this. Take from the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry down a present for the man, a little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double money in your hand. And take back the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brothers also, get up, and return to the man. And El Shaddai give you mercy before the man, that, you may release, that he may release to you your brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. The men took that present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin, and got up, and went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with him, he said to the steward of the house, Bring the men into the house, and a butcher, and butcher an animal, and prepare, for the men will dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph commanded, and the man brought the men to Joseph's house. The men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, Because of the money that was returned in our sacks the first time that we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us, attack us, and seize us as slaves, along with our donkeys. They had come near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they spoke to him at the door of the house, and said, O oh my Lord, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. When we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and behold, each man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money is full, our money in full weight. We have brought back, we have brought it back in our hand. We have brought down our money to our hand to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He said, Peace be to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given your treasure in your sacks. I received your money. Then you brought Simeon out to them. The man brought the men, the man brought the men into the Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet and he gave them donkey's fodder. And he gave their donkey's fodder. So they prepared the present for Joseph coming out at noon, and they had heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which he had had in their house, their hand into the house, and bowed themselves down the earth before him. He asked them of their welfare, and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. And they bowed down humbly. He lifted up his eyes and saw Benjamin, his brother, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother, in whom you spoke of? He said, God be gracious to you, my son. Joseph hurried, for his heart yearned over his brother and saw a place to weep. He entered into his room and wept there. He washed his face and came out, and he controlled himself and said, Serve the meal. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate by themselves, because the, because the Egyptians did not eat with the Hebrews. 
for that was an abomination to the Egyptians. Now they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to the, his youth. And the men marveled at, with one another. He sent portions to them from before him, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as, a, as theirs. They drank and were merry with him. He commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in, in his sack's mouth. Put his cup, the silver cup, the sack's mouth, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, with his grain money. He did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men sent away, they and their donkeys. When they had gone out of the city and were not yet far off, Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after them. When you overtake them, ask them, Why have you rewarded evil for good? Is, this, is not this that from which my Lord drinks, and by which he indeed divines? Have you done this evil in doing so? He overtook them, and he spoke these words to them. He said to them, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servant that they should do such a thing. Behold, the money which we found in your sack's mouth, we brought out against we brought against to you out the land of Canaan. How then should we should we steal silver and gold out of our, out of your Lord's house? With whomever of your servants it is found, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's slaves. He said. Now also let it be according to your words. He with whom it is found will be my slave and will be blameless. Then he hurried and each man took his sack down to the ground and each man opened his sack. So he searched beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes and each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house house and he was still there and they fell on the ground before him joseph said to them what deed is this that you have done do you not know that such a man as i can indeed do divination judah said what will we tell my lord what will we speak how will we clear ourselves god has found out our iniquity of your servants behold we are my lord's slaves both we and he also, in whom, in whose hand the cup is found. He said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whom, in whose hand the cup is found, he will be my slave. But as for you, go up in, in peace to your father. Then Judah came near to him and said, O oh my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears, and do not let your anger burn against your servant. For you are even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have your father, have you a father or a brother? He said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he left he alone is left of his mother, and his father loves him. You said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may sit that I may set my eyes on him. We said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. You said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will see my face no more. When we came up to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. Our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. We said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down. For we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I have not seen him since. If you take this one, this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to shale. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, the boy is not with us since his life is bound up in the boy's life. It will happen when he sees that the boy is no more that he will die. Your servant will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with, sh with sorrow to shale. For your servant be became surety for the boy to my father, saying, 
If I do not bring him to you, then I will bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore, please, let your servant stay instead of the boy, my lord's slave, and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how, how will I go up to my father if the boy is not with me, lest I see the evil that I will come on my father? Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood before him, and he called out, Cause everyone to go out from me. No one else stood with him. While Joseph made himself known to his brothers, he wept aloud. The Egyptians heard, and the, and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still love, live? His brothers could not answer him, for they were terrified at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. They came near. He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years the famine has been in the land, and there are yet five years, in which there will be no plowing and no harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth, and to save you alive by a great deliverance. So now it will be so now I was I was not you <laughs> so now it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh. Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and tell him that it was that was what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord over all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you will be near to me. You and your children, your children's children, your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you. And you will have set Yet five years of famine, lest you come to poverty, you and your household, and all that you have. Behold, your eyes see, and your eyes, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that is my mouth, that speaks to you. You shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and all that, that you have seen. You shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept on them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The report of it heard from Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, do this, load your animals, and go. Travel to the land of Canaan. Take your fathers and your household, and come to me, and I will give you the goods of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded to do this. Take wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives and bring your father and come. Also, do not be concerned about your belongings for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. Then the sons of Israel did so and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh and gave them provision for the way. He, he gave each one of them changes of clothes, but Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver, five changes of clothing, and he, he sent the following to his father, ten donkey loads with the, goods, with the good things of Egypt, and ten female donkey load loaded with grain and bread, provision from his father by the way. So he sent his brothers away, and they departed. And he said to them, See that you do not quarrel on the way. They went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan. So Jacob, their father, they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. His heart fainted, for he did not believe them. They told him all the words of Joseph, which he had, which he had said to them. When he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent, had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, his, their father, revived. Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is alive, and I will go to see him before I die.